Hello and welcome to Bay College's College Algebra Online Lectures. In this video we're going to look at section 1.1 which is linear equations. And we're going to look at the different ways to solve linear equations. But the first thing we have to do is define what is a linear equation. Well, it is a statement of equality. A value on one side of an equal sign equals the value on the other side of the equal sign. Essentially a statement of equality. Um, in this example, example here, excuse me, we have a and b. We, these just represent constants, some number, where a and b are any real number as long as a is not zero, because if uh, a is zero, then we don't have a variable to actually work with, because zero times anything is zero. When it comes to solving these equations, sometimes we'll want to simplify them uh, using the properties of equality, which is essentially just saying what you do to one side, you do to the other. Maybe we want to clear parentheses, we use the distributive property, we use FOIL. Essentially what we're doing is just making simpler equations, more simplified equations. Uh, maybe if we have fractions, we want to multiply through by the LCD to every term to eliminate any fractions that may exist. We also want to, before we even begin, we want to identify domain. Domain is the values of x that we cannot use. Uh, the only two restrictions that we really look at is if we have x's in denominators, because we know we can never divide by 0, so we have to exclude any values of x that would make denominators equal to 0. And we also have to realize that the square root or fourth power or any even power root must be positive. So if there's a value of x that makes the radicand under a radical negative, we have to exclude that value for our even uh, radicals, such as square root or fourth root, sixth root, so on. So let's look at this example in most general form here. We want to consider the domain. Well, there are no uh, fractions, no x's in denominators. There are no square roots. So we say, well, our domain is all real numbers. And that's the symbol that represents all real numbers. So let's just kind of see how we can use the properties of equality to find out what x is. Well, the property of equality just basically says what I do to one side, I do to the other. So if I want to undo this addition, undo order of operations, I'm going to undo this by subtraction. It's opposite operation. And I get ax equals negative b. Well, the next operation I have here is multiplication, a times x, because my overall goal is to always get the variable that I'm interested in all by itself. So I'm going to undo this multiplication using division. Or we can multiply by the reciprocal. It's the same thing. Here, anything divided by itself is 1. So I get x equals negative b over a. That would be my solution. And then I want to plug it back in to check it. And if I do that, I get a times this quantity, my x value. The a's cancel. And I get negative b plus b equals 0, a number minus itself is 0. That's a true statement. So this would be my solution. I've checked it. Let's look at some other examples here. If we look at this here, I have negative 2x equals 36. I, first thing I'm going to do is assess the domain. The domain is all real numbers, because there are no x's in denominators and no radicals. So let's start undoing the math. Well, the only operation I have here is multiplication. So I'm going to use division to undo that. And I divide by the whole coefficient, because anything divided by itself is 1, leaving me with just 1x. And 36 divided by negative 2, a positive divided by a negative is negative. 36 divided by 2 is 18. And it's good practice to check your work. If I were to plug this value back into the original equation, negative 2 times negative 18, a negative times a negative is positive, 2 times 18 is in fact positive 36. So that's a true statement. I know this is the correct answer. In some uh, problems, if we look at this next example, our x's aren't always going to be together. So our goal is to isolate them. We have to sometimes move them across equal signs or get them together, combine like terms, whatever we have to do. And a good rule of thumb when we're moving across the equal sign is always move the lesser value. If, uh, if I look at, just assess it, 4 is less than 5, so I'm going to move the lesser value. And by doing so, I end up with a positive coefficient in front of that x. And that's just a preferred method for myself. 5x's minus 4x's is just a single x. 4x minus 4x is 0. 
zero x's or just zero, zero times anything, right? x equals zero. This is my solution. I'm going to check it. Five times zero equals four times zero. Zero times anything is zero, so zero equals zero is a true statement. All right, let's look at this next example. We notice we're going to assess the domain. There are no domain restrictions because there are no x's in denominators and no radicals. So first thing I'm going to do is simplify it. Let's get rid of these parentheses. I can do so using the distributed property. Just distribute through those parentheses. And now I have a, a simplified equation. I can combine like terms. 4x's and 2x's is 6x's. And maybe at this point, we're intuitive enough to say, hey, these are the same. 6x minus 12 equals 6x minus 12. So I know the answer already that any value I put in for x, I have to put in for both x's. Well, this value is the same as that value, so it doesn't matter what I put in for x. So the answer is all real numbers. But what if we didn't recognize that? Let's continue. Our goal is to isolate the variable. So let's move this across the equal sign. They're both the same value, so it doesn't matter which one I move. If I subtract 6x's from both sides, well, there's no more x's here and no more x's here, leaving me with negative 12 equals negative 12. Now, we might think, well, this is a true statement, and it is, but what happened to x? Well, what this statement tells me is very important. No matter what x is, negative 12 will always be negative 12, a true statement. It doesn't get any truer than that. That we have to realize, we have to think critically and say, well, if it doesn't matter what x is, it doesn't matter what x is. x is any real number. Uh, if we use set notation, we'd say x such that x is any real number. Okay, if we used interval notation, it'd be from negative infinity to positive infinity. So we can display that answer in any of those three ways there. All right, let's look at this next example. Now I see I have a fraction, but I recognize there's no x's in those denominators, so x, uh, there's no domain restrictions due to that. So, and there's no radicals again, so no domain restrictions. The domain is all real numbers. Now, I'm going to use that property of the LCD that I mentioned before. I can eliminate fractions if I determine what the LCD is and multiply all the terms by that value. Well, since there's only one value here, it's 3. That is my least common denominator. Multiply all the terms by 3. 3 times this side, 3 times that side. What you do to one side, do to the other. Well, 3 over 3 reduces to 1. So I have 3x plus 4 equals, just do the distribution, 3x plus 3. And maybe at this point, we're intuitive enough to see something as well. But let's continue on anyways. I want to get my x's together, so I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. 3x's minus 3x's is gone. 4 equals 3x's minus 3x's. It's gone. A positive 3. 4 equals 3. Just like in the previous example, this tells me something important. The only difference is this is not a true statement. 4 is not equal to 3. Well, that tells me that there is no value of x that will ever make 4 equal to 3. It's just not true. So the answer to x is the null set. That means there is no value of x that represents a true equation, a true statement here, because this is not true. All right, moving on. In this example, we see we have uh, a couple of fractions, not just one. Uh, let's, let's immediately eliminate these fractions by determining the LCD. Well, both denominators are 3, so my LCD is 3. And I'm going to multiply all the terms in this equation by 3. So it's kind of like a modified dis distribution here, but I'm distributing it through the whole equation. 3 times 1 third is 1x. 3 times 2 is 6. It's very important to remember to multiply to all the terms. And 3 times negative 2 thirds is negative 2x. And now I can begin to solve this equation, but recognize a lot simple, simpler of an equation. So I'm going to assess it. Well, this is 1. That's negative 2. Negative 2 is less. So I'm going to move this value. And notice I just use its opposite operation. I'm undoing the math. So if I add 2x to one side, I add 2x to the other. Here I have 3x equals 6. 
And now, just like the very first example, 3 is multiplied to x. We can undo that by dividing, and we get x equals 2. One thing that's very important is check your work. Once you find a solution, plug it back in. 2 times 1 third is 2 thirds. 2 minus 2 times 2 thirds is 4 thirds. So 2 minus 4 thirds is 2 thirds. 2 thirds equals 2 thirds. That is a true statement. So I know that this is my solution. All right, let's look at this next example. I recognize this to be a proportion, essentially a fraction equal to a fraction. We call those proportions or ratios. Um, but what I notice is there are x's in the denominator. So I'm going to state the domain, and I'll just use d with a semicolon here. That's my domain. If x is a value here, what makes it equal to 0? Well, if x is negative 4. So x cannot be negative 4. Also, I have an x in this denominator, and it's a different value. x cannot be negative 6. So if I work through the problem, and I get similar equations that I can solve, and I end up getting solutions of negative 4 or negative 6, I have to exclude those values. They're extraneous solutions, and they will not work because it makes it undefined. So now, because I recognize this as a portion, I'm going to use cross multiplication. So I get negative 4 times x plus 6. So I just distributed that as I went, negative 4 times x, negative 4 times a positive 6, equals negative 3 times x, negative 3 times 4. Oh, don't forget my x there. And now I can solve this. Now, I want to get my x's on one side, so I'm going to add 4x to both sides. And I'll write it here, but I'm going to move up there where I have a little bit more board space. Minus 4x plus 4x, that's gone. Negative 3x plus 4x is 1x. So that's on that side, and this side's just negative 24. And now I can get x by itself by adding 12, and I get x equals negative 12. I just added 12 to both sides. Negative 24 plus 12 is negative 12. So I found the solution for x, and now I have to reassess. Does this interfere with my domain? No, nope. negative 12 is a different number than negative 4 and negative 6. So I can check this value now. Negative 12 plus 4 is negative 8. Negative 4 over negative 8 is a positive 1 half. Negative 12 plus 6 is a negative 6. Negative 3 over negative 6 is a positive 1 half. A true statement, so I know my solution works. All right, we're going to move on to this example here. And I'm going to grab an eraser. And hopefully you got that. If not, you can always pause the video, back it up, do whatever you need to do. It goes at your pace when you have that control. Now, looking at this equation, it looks more, uh, more daunting than the others. But one tool that we should have in our rep repertoire of solving equations is factoring. And that's the first thing I'm going to do. I notice I have x's in denominators, so I'm going to have a domain restriction. In order to find those, or at least clearly see them, I'm going to need to factor. This is the difference of squares. Hopefully, we remember that. And it factors to this is a perfect square, so it's positive 3 and negative 3. And this is a perfect square of x times x, so it factors to x plus 3, x minus 3. Now I can determine my domain. And the reason why I don't have to factor this one is it's the same. They're actually the same value, so it would factor the exact same way. So I look at this and say, now my domain is, well, if this value is negative 3, well, if I put negative 3 in there, I get 0. 0 times anything is 0. It becomes undefined, so I have to exclude that value. If I look at this factor, positive 3 would make that equal to 0. So these are my domain restrictions. I have to exclude these two values. And that applies here because this is one of the same factors, and this is both of the same factors. Now, what do I do from here? Well, I have rational expressions. I have fractions. My LCD, if I look at it, this factor and this factor, well, this contains one of those factors, and this contains both of those factors. This is my LCD. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply all three terms by this LCD. Well, if I multiply this times this first term, the, the denominators cancel, and I just get x. If I multiply 
the, the LCD times this, the one factor of x plus 3 cancels, and I get 4 times x minus 3. I'm going to distribute here, so I get 4x minus 12. This one factor that didn't cancel, distribute the 4 through it to get that. Equals, if I multiply this last term by the LCD, the x squared minus 9, which is this, is going to cancel, leaving me with just 3. Now notice, this equation not so daunting compared to the one we started with. So I'm going to combine some like terms. 4x is an x, is 5x. And well, let me just rewrite it. Add 12 to both sides, undo this math, and I get 5x equals 15. I want to undo this multiplication. I'm going to divide both sides by 5 to get x equals 3. Now if I stop there and say that's my answer and I write it on, the, uh, on my test or quiz or whatever, I'm going to get it wrong because of my domain restriction. What do we notice? 3 and 3, well, they are the same value. x is not allowed to be 3 because that makes it undefined. That tells me that this has no solution that makes it a true statement. The only value I found is not in the domain. So this has no solution. Moving on to the next example, if we use these properties, we can always solve the equations. Just use our property of equality, what we do to one side, we do to the other, determine the domain, things of that nature. If I look at this, even though they're all uh, letters, doesn't mean I can't solve it. I want to solve this for x. Well, the first thing I do is I say the domain, x cannot equal 0, because I cannot divide by x. Now with that information, I can start doing the math. I'm going to multiply by the LCD to clear these fractions. And that just happens to be x, so I get a plus b equals c times x. Now, to get x by itself, I divide both sides by c, and I get a plus b divided by c equals x. So I found the solution for x as long as x is not 0. This is actually part of my solution. I have to have all parts in it. And it would be tedious, but we could check it. I could put this value in, and we'd have a complex fraction that we'd have to multiply by the reciprocal and reduce. But we would eventually see that, yes, this would make a true statement in here. So that is my solution, even though we actually didn't have any numbers to work with. And in some uh, cases, when we're working with equations in the real world, sometimes we have to sol solve for particular variables before we get started. Now this is for interest. This is our simple interest uh, equation here. Uh, well, not simple interest, but the amount from simple interest. We could eliminate these parentheses by distributing the p, or I could start undoing this math right away. If I divide by p, there's no need for these parentheses because that multiplication was undone. Uh, our goal here is to solve for r. So if I divide both sides by p, here the p's would cancel, leaving me with 1 plus rt. Now to get rt by itself, that's my goal is to get r by itself. I can undo this addition of 1 by subtracting, subtract 1 from both sides, or maybe you want to consider it as moving it across the equal sign. Now I want to get r by itself, so I'm going to divide by t. Well, I already have a fraction, and I don't want to deal with complex fractions, multi multi-story fractions, so I'm going to multiply by its reciprocal instead, 1 over t. And then I can just distribute it here. 1 over t times a over p is a over p and t minus negative 1 times 1 over t is negative 1 over t. And here, the t's cancel. My goal is to get 1r, and that's what I did. r equals this value. Now, it doesn't matter what side of the equation your variable is on when you're all done, r is this value no matter how you read it. This value is r, or r is this value. It's the same. So if I have 5 equals x, x equals 5, it's the same statement no matter which way you do it. Now the next thing we're going to look at is an application problem. When it comes to application problems, you have to read it. And I know that is kind of goes without saying, but you really need to read it more than once. I recommend you read it at least four times before you finally settle on your acceptable answer.
The first time you read any application problem is just to make sure you understand the words that it contains. As an example, if you have a story problem that says, using an isosceles, isosceles triangle, blah, 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 blah. Well, if you don't know what an isosceles triangle is, you can't really go any further. So you have to make sure you understand the terms. The second time you read it, you want to identify what's the given information? What am I able to work with? The third time you read it, you ask yourself, what am I going to assign as my variable? What am I supposed to go and find? And then with that, hopefully you'll be able to build a workable equation and solve it and get an answer. Once you have that answer, go back and read it a fourth and final time. Make sure that your answer has the same units, that it answers the question, and it should be a reasonable answer. Does, it, does that answer make sense? All right, so we're going to do that. We're going to use those tips. I'm going to read it, and the first time I read it, I'm just going to make sure I understand the words. Going into the final exam, which counts as two-thirds of the course grade, Pacey has test scores of 86, 80, 84, and 90. The average of the test scores, and hopefully we identify, hey, I know that word. That If I didn't understand how to find an average, I'd be in trouble right there. Of the test scores counts for one-third of his grade. What score does he need on the final to get a B in the course, which requires an 80% overall? So that was just to read it. And I had nothing in mind but to make sure I understand these words, pick up on the, the keywords like average. The next time I read it, I'm going to actually determine what is given information. Going into the final exam, which counts as two-thirds of the course grade. So I know from given information, two-thirds of the course grade is solely that final exam. Pacey has test scores of 86 and of 80 and of 84 and of 90. The average, well, that's good. That tells me I've identified that word. I can do something with a series of numbers because I know how to find an average. Sum the numbers and divide it by the number of numbers. That is the average of his test scores. These count for one third of his grade. Well, this average is one third of his overall grade. And uh, what score does he need on the final to get a B in the course, which requires an 80% overall average? Well, I have to do something with that 80% overall average. That's given information. So let me just write it. Uh, I'll write it right over here. So that's his 80% overall. Somehow, this is associated with that. Well, there was one more piece of given information. Two thirds of the course grade is from that final exam. What am I supposed to find if I read it again? Well, just for time's sake, what score does he need on the final to get a B? So the final exam is my variable. It's what I need to find. Well, two thirds, which was given information of that final. So now let's put it together. How do we find an average? Well, here we have this average. That counts for one third. Whatever this is, is the rest of the grade, two thirds of that final. If I put them together or add them, I know I'm going to have the total score for Pacey in this class. And I was also told that you need at least an 80% overall. So that means this value here has to be greater than or equal to 80. So we actually have an inequality, but we treat those relatively the same. So now I, can, I actually built my equation. I'm ready to solve it, and I can go through and solve it. If I simplify this uh, and then multiply it by 1 third, because I already worked it out, I get 85, uh, 85 thirds plus 2 thirds x is greater than or equal to 80. And that was just simplifying what's in the parentheses, adding these up, dividing it by 4, multiplying by 1 third. 85 thirds plus 2 thirds x is greater than or equal to 80. But now I notice it's just like the other uh, examples we work with. I have something in the denominator. Multiply through by the LCD, which is 3. I'm going to get 85 plus 2x is greater than or equal to 240. And now I can get x by itself. I'm going to subtract 85 
and divide by 2 to get x must be greater than or equal to 77.5. Now, I found an answer. What is its units? Well, let's think critically. We're looking at an average. So maybe because it's a grade, it told me the, uh, the unit right here. It's a percent. I have to get 77.5% on the final exam, or Pacey does, in order to get a B in the class. So this is my answer, and I make sure that I state it as such. It's important to have units in any story problem. So 77.5% is the score that Pacey must get on the final exam in order to get a B in the class. Now, hopefully uh, most of our instructors don't hold the final exam to be two-thirds of the course. That's, that's pretty high, I think. But here's the thing. We're going to give you a quiz, something you can try on your own, using the exact information in the previous problem and some of the work's done for you already. Answer this question. Can Pacey get an A in this class if an A requires a 90% overall? What score would he need on the final? Try this one for yourself. Set up the equation you need. And uh, good luck. Thank you for watching.